What up everybody, Mike here from MRMG Ward Penmanship and Design, and today we're designing a signature for a master penman. <laughs> Not terribly long ago, I attended the engrossing saga with Master Penman Harvest Crittenden. It was a really awesome time, and while I was there, Harvest said she wanted me to design a signature for her. Now, Harvest has ordered a blotter for me before. She submitted a design that I had put onto some leather. I will post an image of it right now. But this time, she wanted me to design something. Now, that's a lot of pressure. Designing a signature for a Master Penman is, in my opinion, a pretty big deal. Because uh, if there's one person that's gonna notice the flaws and and whatnot that are in it, it's gonna be the Master Pendant. So, pressure's on, but we're gonna do it. It's gonna be awesome, uh, I hope. Uh, let's get into it. As always, we will write the name that we're designing up here at the top. So, we can have that as a spelling reference. People ask me all the time what my regular writing looks like, and here it is. I write in block capitals probably 90% of the time, whenever I'm not practicing or feeling fancy. I lay down the Spencerian letters unconnected, and then we'll start connecting some things. I'll be honest, I had some trouble connecting the T to the C, finding something that worked here. And then, but luckily, I did. I'm gonna throw an ending flourish in there. Balance that out with the opening flourish. The ending flourish, after doing all that, felt a little empty, I guess, so I add, added that little smaller oval in the middle there. By now, I've kind of solidified my design. Now I'm just going through from the beginning and cleaning up all the lines, perfecting all the ovals, and using my eraser a whole lot to finalize all the designs and ideally make it perfect. And if I've done my job, there we go. What I would call a perfect signature. So now all we gotta do is foil it. Here we go! and done. It is now my hope that Harvest loves using her blotter as much as I loved making it for her. As slightly stressful as it was. <laughs> In a good way. Not a not a bad kind of stress. I do want to apologize to everybody watching. I did take a bit of a break. It wasn't really intentional. It wasn't one of those, oh, I need to take a break from social media and stuff like that. I just got completely caught up in my own projects. It kind of went from one to the other to the other to the other, and I am not yet in the habit of remembering 
to turn my camera on when I do my own things. Uh, when I do my own projects, oftentimes it is, it is a lot of experimentation. So I move around a lot and things change. And I haven't found a really good way to record that on video yet. And like I said, it's not habitual yet for me to to set up a camera. Usually I'm just sitting here or watching a movie or something and I think of a cool idea and I go, oh, well that's dope, let's do it. And I kind of dive right in and then before I know it, it, a number of hours has elapsed and I'm finished my project and I think, oh, that turned out really cool. I should have recorded that for YouTube. Whoops. <laughs> but I, I promise you I'm trying to get better at that um, with my own projects. I will get better. I'm not just trying to get better. I will get better. I will be posting more. Hopefully, no more breaks coming up uh, for the remainder of the summer and the time after that. But be sure that you hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Let me know down below if you like this video, or if you didn't, or if there's things that you think I should change. Uh, my YouTube channel is still really new and very moldable at the moment. I'm still kind of figuring things out how I want everything to look. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for hanging out today, and until next time, be sure that you are falling in love with the process, and don't forget that life should be just a bit of silliness, really.